Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are concluding Isaiah chapter 26 today. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get right into it. Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing us to completion once again. It is by your strength. It is by your might. It is by your great and glorious hand that we can get through this word and have understanding and revelation, which comes straight from you, God. You are God of love. You are God of light. And we thank you for letting us walk in your light, God. Let us be counted worthy when you come to receive us into glory. Lord God, wash us with the washing of your word, God. Be our groomsmen, be our everything, be our Lord and our love and our Father and everything that we need. We give you permission to come in and lead us and guide us by your spirit, God, into all truth. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Rama word, God. We love you and we praise you. You are always right on time. Thank you, God. All of you, none of me, God. Bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys, we are in Isaiah chapter 26 today. Let's just go back one so that we can see where we were last time. We kind of reached, reached a, a high point last time with this woman in labor. Verse 17, like a pregnant woman who writhes and cries out in her pangs when she is near to giving birth. So, so those pangs are those sharp pains, right? Or sharp emotion. So it says when she is near to giving birth. So, and verse 18 is where we'll start today. We were pregnant. We writhed, but we have not, but we have given birth to wind. Wow. We have accomplished no deliverance in the earth and the inhabitants of the world have not fallen Wow. So this is Isaiah. And we know Isaiah is a Hebrew. And so here he is speaking of the the Israelite people. And so he is saying that that their purpose was unfulfilled, right? They were going through all the motions, all of the the things that um, we need to go through to give birth to purpose, right? We had a vision, we had a purpose, we labored in it, but was left with un- nothing. It was left unfulfilled. Nothing was brought forth, right? So, and in and, and other words, what is the purpose of the, the Israelite people, right? It's to be the representative of God and God's people on this earth, the chosen people, right? And so they are to labor in God and live for him and be, be set apart for him, right? Until the kingdoms of our Lord, the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord, right? So, so they have a purpose in this earth, but here it says we were pregnant, we writhed, but we have given birth to wind. We have accomplished no deliverance in the earth and the inhabitants of the world have not fallen, meaning like we haven't gone forth and taken over and occupied in the way that he said it. And how was that? Why was that? Because of sin, right? Sin separates man from God. Sin stops man from fully, fully fulfilling the purpose that God set before them. And so in other words, they were in need of a savior. They were in need of someone to come in and stand in their place and not only take on their sin, but live perfectly so that they could fulfill the will of God. And the only way for that to happen was through a Messiah. We were pregnant, we writhed, but we have given birth to wind. We have accomplished no deliverance in the earth and the inhabitants of the world have not fallen. Hmm. 
So this, this is talk about something global and it's going to come up again later in this teaching, but this is something on a global scale. You have to think these, th this is not talking about Israel and in the promised land and just taking over the promised land. This is something global. This is talking about world here. So when we're talking about world, you have to think in, in essence, what is the mission of God to bring his people back to himself, to defeat the enemy, to defeat sin? And so when you talk about things like that, we're talking about Jesus. This is a global mission, not just a mission to deliver God's people to the promised land. This is a mission to deliver man from sin. So verse 19, your dead shall live, their bodies shall rise. You who dwell in dusk, awake and sing for joy, for your dew is a dew of light, and the earth will give birth to the dead. So, and, and something to remember is, you know, just like we study with the mask of Ethan from verse 18, the one thing that we learned there and the thing that keeps coming up in my spirit, even, even today, as I was um, just thinking on the word and everything and just thinking about circumstances, you know, the mask of Ethan always comes back to me because God is not afraid of you talking things out with him. God is not afraid of you bringing issues to him that you feel have been inconsistent. God is not afraid of you bearing your heart to him, right? So the, the key is in the end, give glory to God, just like with the mask of even it, he didn't take a long time doing that. He spent most of the, the, um, the chapter talking about, you know, what had not been done, but in the end, he gave glory to God, right? And that's how we need to be. And even in this scripture, you know, Isaiah could only see in part, right? He was a prophet, but just like all prophets, when they prophesy, you prophesy in part. So you can only see so much, right? And here he knows what Israel is doing, but he's prophesying about something global. He's prophesying about something bigger, right? than even what he knows. When he prophesies, he thinks he's talking just about one specific thing, but the complexity of God cannot be measured. Just like the one who, um, I never remember his name, the man in the New Testament who was prophesying, he was the Pharisee and he prophesied about Jesus saying, basically, if it was real, it would last. But if it was fake, it won't last, right? He thought he was just talking about Jesus not being, you know, the Messiah, but he actually was prophesying that Jesus was truth, right? Because he would last. And even through time and death and life, he would still be around because he's the Alpha and Omega. So yeah, when we prophesy, we prophesy only in part. And here you can see all that Isaiah could see was the fact that, you know, things had been left unfulfilled, right? We were pregnant, we writhe, but we have given birth to wind. We have accomplished no deliverance in the earth and the inhabitants of the world have not fallen. Verse 19, your dead shall live, their body shall rise. Ooh, <laughs> you guys know what are we talking about here? This is foreshadowing of rapture, right? Because how could the earth give up the dead except when Christ is in the clouds and we meet him there, right? The dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, right? So this is talking, this is foreshadowing the rapture occurring, right? Your dead shall live, their bodies shall rise, you who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for joy. So even these people who had who had given birth to wind, who had brought no for no deliverance, they had they had been laboring, right? But they passed away even in their laboring. Just like many of the Christians that we know, they died in Christ right? They died having done their work on this earth. And now their dwelling place is, is, is in death, right? So it says your dead shall live, their bodies shall rise. 
you who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for joy. Why? Because something has changed, right? Something has shifted. Someone has come back. Someone has returned. And Christ is that one who has returned. He is returning for his bride. Your dead shall live. Their body shall rise. You who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for joy. So any of you who have any kind of, you know, doubts about whether the rapture is going to be pre-tribulation or post-tribulation, all of that stuff, you know, just read here, just read what we're reading. And I pray that God reveals it to you. So it says, your dead shall live, their body shall rise. You who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for joy for the dew, for your dew is a dew of light and the earth will give birth to the dead. So this is just a morning dew, a, a, a newness, a beauty that's going to come upon the dead, right? So it, it's not over when death comes. There's more to it, right? There, there's going to be a dew of light. There's going to be a shining in the darkness and the, excuse me, and the earth will give birth to the dead. Wow. And how does that happen? It only happens in the rapture, right? Now, if we were talking about dead men's bones, that would be something different. But this is talking about the dead, right? The dead are going to raise again, right? All right, so let's keep going. And, and if it were just talking about all the dead, we wouldn't say awake and sing for joy, right? If it was just talking about all dead in the world, right? No, this is going to be a bearing up of souls that are, have died in their labor, that have died in Christ, that have died in the dew of light, for your dew is a dew of light, and the earth, of, and the earth will give birth to the dead. Verse 20, come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until the fury has passed by. Hmm. To me, that that just sounds like the return of Christ, right? All of this just is such a great foreshadowing of the turn of return of Christ and the foreshadowing of rapture. So verse 20, where it says, come, that is the word halak, and that's Hebrew 3212 in the Strong's Concordance. It says, go, walk, come, depart, proceed, move, go away, die or to live, traverse, to lead, to bring, lead away, carry, cause, to walk. I just love that, that those definitions because they really kind of give you an idea of the outline of the way that word has been used in the Hebrew. So I love the going away part, right? Come away, you know, um, come up here, kind of like in Revelation for be, um, no, I'm sorry, verse 20, come my people enter your chambers, all right. And so those chambers are basically an inner place, a hidden away place, a place where destruction can't come. Right. So when you think of that, you think of the Israelites when they went inside and they had the blood over the doorposts and that death passed by them. Right. And then it also reminds me of your prayer closet, right? The hidden place, the secret place, right? And the reason why it reminds me of that, this chambers, because it says, and shut the door behind you, because we know when we're entering in for prayer, God likes us to shut the door behind us. And I just love that fact that it just, you know, it feels like, you know, kind of like going into the ark the arc of safety going into, you know, Christ going up to the heavens to meet him in the air. Come my people into your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until the fury has passed by. 
Glory be to God. The fury has passed by. And what does this fury mean? This fury means anger, indignation. One of the definitions said to froth at the mouth, fury, especially of God's displeasure with sin rage. So when God is pouring out these these seals, these bowls, and these in in these judgment, these trumpets, right? And he's in God is Jesus is going forth to make sure it is fulfilled. It, this is a part of us being caught away. Why? Because a bride or God's chosen people are not appointed that wrath, right? This, this indignation that he is talking about, let's go back, is talking about the earth. This is global, right? It says we have accomplished no deliverance in the earth and the inhabitants of the world have not fallen, Right? And so we're not just talking about, you know, whether or not um, uh, this is just going to happen to all people. You know, he, he's ta- he says, come my people and enter into your chambers. He's not going to cause his people, those who are engrafted into him, those who are his chosen people who believed in him, who put their hope and their trust in him and who have abided in him and walked in light. He's not going to put them out the door to suffer the wrath that everybody else is coming. No, that's not the character that that God shows in the Bible. Here is proof. Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until the fury has passed by, right? Our God is a God who warns. Our God is a God who says, hey, this is coming. I need you to come out of her, my people. I need you to to be away from this. I need you to not be a part of this because I'm about to pour out my wrath. Just like Lot, he warned Lot before he he, um, demolished Sodom and Gomorrah, right? He told him to come out, right? He, He sent his angels in to take them out. And not until they came out was, did everything go go down right so it says come my people enter your chambers in your inner place your hidden away place and shut your doors behind you hide yourselves for a little while until the fury has passed by verse 21 which makes sense too because we will be back right? We will, until the fury has passed by, we will come back. We'll come back with Christ, right? When Christ rides up on his horse, we're going to be right beside him, right? And that's when we'll be back. The fury will have passed by. Verse 21, for behold, the Lord is coming out from his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity and the earth will disclose the blood shed on it and will no more cover it slain so this is just talking about jesus fulfilling those um seals those bold in those judgment, those trumpets right because remember it's jesus's job to do that to fulfill this part of the word if you read revelation which we've gone through then you'll remember that it was no one was found worthy to even open the seals remember this revelation is a revelation of god and you know um john he revealed it to john through his angel and it was jesus who was the one the only one who was found worthy to open the seal to crack it open and to fulfill it right to enact it and make sure it it came to pass so it says for behold the lord has come out from his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity and the earth will disclose the blood shed on it and will no more cover its slain so if you um look up this word iniquity for the 
for behold, the Lord is coming out from his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. Iniquity, I know we've we've done the definition of iniquity before, but I just, I wanted to redo it just because it's been a little while. So iniquity, uh, meaning perversity, depravity, iniquity, guilt, depravity, a wicked a wicked or morally corrupt act. Um, oh yeah, okay, so in depravity. So the reason why I said depravity twice is because now I'm de- defining depravity. So iniquity was perversity, depravity, or iniquity, guilt. So you have like a those with perverse nature, those who are depraved, those who are having um, iniquity within them and guilt, right? So, um, and then also depravity, the definition for depravity means a wicked or morally corrupt act. Um, the innate corruption of human nature due to sin, right? So remember morals and like ethics are having, having no sense of, you know, no sense of understand, not, not necessarily understanding, but no standard, right, with which to live by. You're living by your own will without any sort of um, notion for what's good and what's bad. You make it up as you go along, right? It's corrupted. It is the way of man. So a wicked or morally corrupt act, the innate corruption of human nature due to sin, for behold, the Lord is coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, and the earth will disclose the blood shed on it and will no more cover its slain. So here it's basically saying like, I, um, I don't know if you guys, well, I'm not going to go into that. I'll just say that when the inhabitants of the earth are are uncovered right and and in the iniquity is is being punished the earth will disclose the bloodshed on it so remember when Cain killed Abel it was the blood itself that was crying out right from the ground right so just imagine all of the people who've been slain all of the innocent lives who've been taken, who no one has, you know, cried out for, no one knew, no one knew what happened to them, no one saw their death, right, no one, um, was able to even mourn for them because maybe they disappeared or according to you, you know, from what people knew, right? But this blood that cries out from the ground is no longer going to be covered by earth, right? These people who were slain or murdered or or killed in any way, um, the earth is not going to cover that anymore. It's all going to be out in the open. The dead are going to rise and, and God is going to allow his vengeance to be poured out. Remember, we talk about all the time how God is such a prudent God, right? He is such a great record keeper. He keeps a great record of wrongs and rights and, and how much and how little. He, he, he's a great record keeper, so when he pours out this vengeance, when he pours out these judgments, these these seals, these bowls, these trumpets, it is a, a final, you know, pouring out of wrath on the people who are still on the earth, right? And, and a revealing that is going to take place of the wrongs that have been done and the earth will shake, right? God is going to really shake it up and and deal with all the wrongs that were done and those people who have died who who have you know who who think they got away with things right who who think that they 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 got away with murder or or hidden somewhere and they've gone on and died and you know god is going to cause them to answer he has great records 
he is going to cause them to answer for what they have done if they have not repented. All right, so that comes to the end of verse 21. We'll just read verse 21 one more time. For behold, the Lord is coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, and the earth will disclose the bloodshed on it and will no more cover it slain. If that doesn't sound like what's going to happen in the last days and in after the rapture and you know I just feel like that is such a beautiful coming together of hey this is a rhema word for us right thank you God for showing us Isaiah 26 because Isaiah 26 is a foreshadowing of the return of Christ it is a a, a great just wonderful place that God is showing that hey prophecy is being fulfilled it will be fulfilled until everything is complete right all right so let's go ahead and pray and we'll close it out Lord Jesus thank you so much for your word thank you that it is on time thank you that I don't have to to scratch and scrape and try to figure things out God, to try to get it to match with, with what the times are. No, Lord, your Holy Spirit does all that. It does all that work, God. You know when you want the word to go forth. You know how you want the word to go forth. You know what word you want to go forth. It's all you, God. Just like you said in the last teaching, that it was your work. God, you did it. We love you. We love living in the light and we love walking in the light, walking in your spirit. We know that you are coming soon and your reward will be with you. And we give you honor and glory and praise for that. In your mighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anyone out there who would like to receive Jesus as their savior and Lord, it is the best decision you can ever make. It is an eternal decision that you're making, right? It, it's the best. It's, it's the only decision that you truly make in this life. It's whether or not to receive Christ into your heart. Receive him now. It is a free gift. You get eternal life. What greater gift is there? There isn't a greater gift. So receive Christ now more than saying the words behind me, believe them in your heart. Repeat after me, but believe it in your heart. All of the words that I'm saying, believe it and let God work it out in you. All right. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day. I thank you because I believe you are the son of God. Forgive me of my sins. Pour your blood out on me. Thank you, Jesus, for covering me. You are my savior. You are my Lord. Sit on the throne of my heart. I have led myself for long enough. I choose you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. If you have prayed that prayer and you believe it in your heart, then you have received Christ into your heart and no one can take that away from you right? You are Christ child. And so he has sent his Holy Spirit into you to seal you up until the day of redemption, meaning he's put his stamp of approval on you. And, and the only person who can crack that seal is Christ Jesus, right? He is going to crack that seal when he comes to redeem you. You are his alone. 
and the Holy Spirit, that's one of its purposes, but one of a great purpose is that he's going to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he's going to tell you where to go, what to do, when to come, when to go. He is such a great guide as long as you don't chasten him away and, and resist his, his, his unction. So he will lead you into a church home where you can go and be baptized in Jesus name, in the name of the father, in the name of the son, in the name of the Holy spirit, in the name of Jesus, he is, he is going to show you where to go to, to fellowship with other believers and be sharpened in him. All right, you guys. I love you. I am praying for you. I hope you all are doing well. I know that God is surrounding you. He is keeping you. He is shining his face upon you and he is blessing you and giving you his children, his peace. We love you and we are just praying for you. Remember, you can leave your prayer requests below and God is with you. He is for you. Don't ever let the enemy lie to you and tell you that, oh, you've done it now. No, no. That's an easy tell that God is trying to show you that the enemy is trying to enter in and you need to go and spend time with him. Always spend time with God. Open up the word for yourself and talk to the Lord. Ask him what this passage means. Ask him what this word means. The Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. All you have to do is wait and listen. He's going to be speaking to you. I truly believe it. All right. Just have faith and walk by faith. All right. Love you guys. Take care. And if I don't see you next time, I'll see you in the clouds. Bye.